Hello fellow 3D enthusiasts, my name is Ian, and I'm here to share with you a very efficient way to do smoke simulations. So a lot of the time with smoke simulations, they're amazing because they can fit right into your specific situation. And that's one thing I like quite a bit about them, but oftentimes they don't have to be quite as customized. If you happen to see the live stream I did on Saturday, you have a good idea where I'm going here. I got the basis of this idea from Ian Hubert, and the idea is that you can just kind of render a smoke simulation out and then use that as an animation on a plane. And you're probably going to want transparency with that, and you're probably going to want it to loop. And once you do that, you can have a really nice high quality smoke simulation just on a plane, and you can render it out really easily, and you can put it anywhere you'd like. So I found this to be a huge idea, so I'm going to share a little bit more about it in today's video. All right, let's get into this. I'm going to start by placing the camera on the side here and making the resolution square. Let's scale up the default cube, make sure it's filling up the whole scene there, and then go to the physics panel and enable smoke and turn that into a domain object. Let's drop in another cube, scale that up, and then in the physics panel we're going to go smoke again, but this time we're going to choose flow. Okay, back to the domain. Let's check this little button here that says dissolve. And for the time there, let's set that to 10. We don't really want the smoke to go off camera, so that's why we want it to disappear before it does that. At the same time, we do want as much smoke in the frame as we can have so that we're not wasting resolution. Okay, let's add some forces to make things more interesting. I'm going to start with the turbulence, and you can set the strength to be whatever wild value you want, like 9.5. At this point, I'm going to select the domain and turn up the resolution to be 64, so we can have a better idea of how it will eventually look. Then let's set our start frame to a point where the smoke looks like it is in full force and it's not like kind of starting up anymore. I used frame 100, but for you, obviously, it will depend on how fast your smoke is rising. Alright, when you're happy with your smoke, the next step is to bake it out high resolution. I set my resolution to be around 200. For you, that depends on whatever you reckon your computer can handle. Then when you're ready, go down to where it says cache here and hit bake. Mine says delete bake, yours will say bake. If that area is grayed out, that's because you haven't saved your scene, and I recommend doing that. One last thing before you bake, make sure your start and end frames are set correctly. So, for the start frame, you probably don't want that to be the same start frame as your animation, because then your smoke simulation will just start ramping up again. You want your smoke simulation to already be going at that point. So probably start at frame 1. And then you're ready to bake! This might take a hot minute, so sit tight. Alright! Now that you've got your glorious yet somewhat disappointingly pixelated bake, it's time to do some materials. So in the shading tab, I have my domain selected, and I'm just going to delete the principled BSDF node, and I'm going to drop in a principled volume node. Make sure that plugs into the volume rather than the surface, because I have done that before and it took me a long time to figure out what was wrong. If you want it to be more thick, just turn up density. I'm going to turn my world background down to black so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Ah, yes. Hey, while we're here, let's select our emitter object and just make sure that that does not show up in renders. Noise. I think we can probably afford to zoom in our camera a bit. Let's go into the render properties, drop down film, and hit transparency. That way we can see through. Cool. We're going to render this out as an image sequence. I'm going to use PNG, turn the compression down to zero, and make sure that this is rendering out to a folder with nothing else in it. Let's jump into a new video editing file, import that image sequence we just rendered out, Shift right click to set the cursor in the middle, and then hit K to cut it in half. Now I'm just going to take the first half and flip it around to the back side, and line those up so that they have a bit of overlap. Now let's set our end frame. I'm going to drop in a black color just so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm also going to make sure that the resolution is exactly the same as we had it in our last file. Okay, now for the looping part. I'm going to animate the alpha of these two strips here, so that the first strip will fade out as the other one fades in and I'm just dropping keyframes on this alpha value by hitting I. Check it out. Let's use the same render settings as last time. And don't forget to delete this black thing. I think, yeah, yeah, let's, let's make sure that's not in there. Oh, by the way, you probably want this in a different folder than the last folder you used, or else it's a big mess. Also, try not to use any numbers in the name for the file, because that'll confuse the crap out of Blender when we're trying to use an animated texture. And that will confuse the crap out of you for about 10 minutes. Yes, I had a confusion crap timer going. Okay, let's tie this dumpster fire of a tutorial back together here. In the scene that you want smoke in, import an image as a plane. Yes, that's an add-on, it's free, and it comes with Blender, you have no excuse. Sorry, that took a sassy turn that I wasn't expecting. Oh, hey, look at that! It, uh, it, it could use some work. I'm gonna mess around with shadows here for a second. Uh, alpha hashed. Let's try that. 
So if you play the animation, you'll realize it's not an animation because it's not actually moving. Let's go into shading and fix that. On the image texture node where it says single image, let's switch that to image sequence, and then we'll just type in the amount of frames that our image sequence has. You can see that it's starting to work, but let's make sure that we check cyclic so that it actually loops. And it works. Throw in a little imagination and you get... Thank you so much for watching. If you like this and you found it useful, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit brush element pack. Um, that, that will sign you up for the email list. Oh, and also you get the free hydraulics. The hydraulics are made for Blender, they're good for kit bashing, and they're, yeah, they're free. Catch you next week. Cheers.